Welcome back to Core Cutting Today, where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting, including today, Walmart's new uh, Google TV powered 4K Pro Edition streaming player. We'll break down what's happening there. Comcast has dropped Bally Sports RSNs. Is this a death blow for Bally Sports? And a whole lot more coming up here in a quick minute. Now, if you want to learn more about these stories, check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment, I'll put a link to each story there so you can read them for yourself. If you're new here and you like what we do, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. We'll really appreciate it. Now, a quick little update. There is a ton of construction happening outside. No matter where I am in the house, there's some of that happening. I apologize about that. I am out of the studio for about another week. Uh, hopefully the background noise isn't too apparent, too distracting. I do apologize. And I thank you for your support as we go through this family vacation. All right, let's dive into it. Uh, for some time now, Walmart, uh, we've heard reports that Walmart was working on a new 4K um, Google TV Pro device. Now, last year, uh, Walmart made a big splash with a $20, sub $20, like $19.98, $19.99, somewhere in there, 4K streaming player. Now they're having a $49.98 um, streaming player come out on the market. It's pretty nice, Wi-Fi 6, 32 gigabytes of storage, and a whole lot more. Not officially announced yet, but a YouTuber found it for sale in a Walmart store already. This happens quite often. Sometimes stores get deliveries of things that say don't put out on shelves until X date, and then they put them out earlier and sell them. That's how we knew, learned about the most recent version of the Google Chromecast a few years back, when they did that without um, warning Best Buy stores not to be selling them. I actually got my hands on one early that way. But this is a pretty nice device. According to this uh, superdeal.tv, dash TV, link in the show notes to his, uh, in my story to his video. Uh, it's a Wi-Fi 6 device with USB 3.0, Dolby Vision with Atmos, 3 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, powered by a quad-core processor. Um, the device will use uh, Bluetooth 5.2 for the remote and will include a far field built-in remote for hands-free or a microphone for hands-free control, no need for a remote. You can just say, hey, Google, and it will launch and allow you to open different things. Now, you compare this to the $20 4K streaming player, which only has two gigabytes of RAM, eight gigabits of storage, also a quad-core processor, but a little bit slower version, Dolby Audio, and other details with it. Also, that's an older um, uh, Wi-Fi standard, not the Wi-Fi 6 that this has. So for $30 more, it's a pretty nice streaming player. Um, now, for a little bit more, you can get the 4K, um, the Fire TV 4K uh, Max stick, which is a little bit more powerful. But again, though, this is Google TV. A lot of people really like that at this price point. Could it replace the Google Chromecast with Google TV? Honestly, it's got some good specs to really help it stand out. We'll have to get our hands on the remote and see what the quality of the remote is and the like. As soon as I see this in the stores, I'll be picking it up and doing the full review here at CoreCuttersNews.com and on our YouTube channel. Again, though, not officially announced, not available on the website, but has started to show up in some stores. You may want to check your local electronics store next time you're at Walmart in their electronics department. If you see it, let me know. A few readers have said they've already found it in their local Walmarts. And honestly, that 4K or the HD stick they sold, the $14.99 one, I don't think they really announced it ever. They just kind of put it on the shelves and eventually put it on the website. So it's not unusual for them to do that. All right, let's keep moving the stories along. Comcast will, or now I'm recording this, has dropped Bally Sports. Now this is kind of a surprise. A lot of people expected Comcast to reach a deal with Bally Sports. Spectrum and DirecTV did recently, but Comcast has not. First time in recent memory that Bally Sports has gone dark on a major cable network. Really bad timing for Bally Sports' parent company, Diamond Sports Groups, as they try to exit bankruptcy. Now to lose the number two largest provider of television in the United States is not probably what they wanted right now with everything happening. Now, there are some options for core cutters to still get it. If you're a Comcast customer wanting Bally Sports, you can, of course, subscribe directly to Bally Sports Plus in many areas, not all, and pay about 20 bucks a month to access your Bally Sports content directly through their app. You can also switch over to DirecTV, uh, Stream or Fubo, both of them offer it on a month-to-month -month basis with no long-term contracts. You can find out more details about this in the um, show notes down below, but I'll be honest, this is not looking good for Bally Sports. They need to strike a deal. Comcast and Bally Sports haven't really commented on what the major holdup here was. I'm assuming money was part of it. But what surprised me, Comcast is pushing to move 
Valley Sports into a higher tier. Last year, it was reported by New York Post that that would happen, that Comcast would move Valley Sports into a more expensive tier. Ballot, that didn't happen. Comcast denied that report, but it's possible because Ballot, Comcast has been moving other sports RSNs into more expensive tiers, um, driving up the cost of, uh, for fans of those networks. If you're impacted again, DirecTV Stream, Fubo, or right through the Valley Plus Sports apps are streaming services that offer this on a month-to-month -month contract so that you know if you do see these return to Comcast and you're a Comcast customer, you don't have to be paying this long-term year contract with it to get a temporary solution for it, which is really cool. You think about these contract fights 20 years ago, if your cable TV provider lost that channel, there was no streaming options. At least now there's options if you really must have that right in the middle of Major League Baseball season to watch your favorite games. All right, Paramount Plus has reported its earnings. Now we talked already about the CEO stepping down and being replaced by a council of different leaders. Well, they reported their earnings this week at the same time and reported that Paramount Plus added 3.7 million subscribers in the first three months of 2024. They also saw advertising revenue jump 31% thanks to Paramount uh, Plus, Pluto TV, and ad sales to the Super Bowl. Revenue for streaming on Pluto, Paramount Plus grew 51% in the first quarter, really nice, as they tried to make Paramount Plus profitable either late this year or early next year, is what I'm starting to hear is most likely. Now with this, we see some big shakeup as Paramount tries to close a deal to sell. Um, we'll see how this plays out, but um, look for Paramount Plus to be profitable later this year or early next year, subject to change on what happens with the market and everything out there. Let me know, what do you think of Paramount Plus and Pluto TV? Are you a fan of their streaming networks? Leave me a comment, let me know. All right, if you live in the United Kingdom, you can now stream broadcast TV stations for free through a new service called Freely. Hopefully someday in the United States we'll be able to do this. But a joint coalition of the BBC, ITV, Channel 4, and Paramount Global's Channel 5 has teamed up to launch a new service called Freely. Um, and in this service, you can now stream on your television, there's some catches with this, uh, your local live and on-demand content from those content providers, BBC, ITV, Channel 4, and Channel 5. Now with this few things, it's only available on smart televisions, no mobile apps, no web browser app, for example. It also only offers a 15, the ability to pause for 15 minutes. So if you're watching a show, you can pause it, go to the bathroom, but you better be back within 15 minutes or it's gonna start playing again. Also with that, uh, there is a on-demand catalog with ad supports on it. So you can um, watch some on-demand content support with ads. It will even show you, hey, you're watching the show, we have on-demand content available. I really hope in the United States that this becomes a reality. Uh, in the United Kingdom, cord cutting's been lagging slightly behind the US. Cord cutting got a head start here in the United States compared to other areas, as we had some earlier streaming services not available internationally at first. Well now, as streaming services like Disney Plus and others have become widely available and very popular in the United Kingdom and other parts of the world, we have seen cord cutting explode in those areas. And now we see these broadcast television providers work to try to um, reach that. Now they say this is targeting the millions of uh, UK citizens that do not have a traditional TV provider. We'll keep a close eye on this, but if you live there, you can now watch by downloading this to your television, free or um, broadcast television. Someday I hope the United States gets this. Why is it not in the United States? Well, a vast majority of the revenue for channels that like ABC, NBC, Fox, and CBS, for example, still comes from cable TV retransmission fees. Until that is significantly impacted enough that it becomes financially profitable to do a deal like this, I don't expect to see a deal like this anytime soon, unfortunately. Uh, leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and I will I'd love to hear from you, but I think we're years away probably from seeing something like this in the United States, unfortunately. I would love to see it. I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon. All right, let's dive into the deal of the day. DirecTV is offering um, a $10 off for 24 months of their choice package. The catch is, I wanted to point this deal out because it's got a catch to it. It's on a choice plan, um, but it's only for the DirecTV via internet, not the DirecTV stream. So you get one of their devices, there's some different terms and conditions with this, and there is a contract with this, but you get $10 off versus DirecTV Stream. If you know you're going to continue to be keeping a DirecTV's package and you're happy with it, it is one option. The downside again is 
you get locked into a long-term contract with this. Details down below in the show notes if you want to learn more about this offer to save $10 a month for 24 months. And lastly, Amazon reported its earnings this week and saw ad revenue jump $11.8 billion in the first quarter of 2024. One of the things that really helped drive this up was the fact that they put, started put ads by default into Amazon Prime Video. Now, if you don't want ads with your Amazon Prime Video, you have to pay an extra $2 a month to not get them. It's reported that the vast majority of Amazon Prime Video customers have just kept the ads plan, generate, helping them generate an additional $11 plus billion dollars in revenue. Of course, there's other things that go into that factor, but that is one of the main driving factors behind it. So very interesting to see um, that as Amazon works to try to keep their revenue high. All right, question of the day. Every day I try to answer a few questions here or in the comments. If you have a question for me you would like me to answer, leave me a comment, start off with something like a question for Luke, and I'll do my best to answer it in the comments down below. Today's question is about Spectrum. Uh, this week I mentioned how Spectrum was trying to drop some Paramount channels, and John here, is, um, Jonathan, I apologize, Jonathan, I misread your username, Ask. I'm a Spectrum customer and I watched the channels that were mentioned for possibly being dropped. Um, would you happen to know if Spectrum reached a deal uh, to keep the channels or not? So it is reported that Spectrum and Paramount have reached a short-term extension to keep Paramount's channels on Spectrum for now as they continue to negotiate. Puck News has reported that the hangups here is to um, drop some channels from Paramount, but the question is which one? The two sides are fighting over that and fighting over exact terms about bundling Paramount Plus into Spectrum Cable TV like Disney and ESPN Plus was. We don't have any firm numbers. We don't even know how long the short-term extension was. Maybe, I think Variety broke the news that there was a short-term extension and Puck broke the news about it, the argument being over which channels get dropped. I can't remember, but I believe those are the two sources for that. I suspect that we will see some channels dropped. I suspect there'll be many of those sub MTV2 type channels that um, are very, mildly watched. Now, if it does get dropped and you get Paramount Plus bundled, the good news for you is a lot of that content that just airs as reruns on the, many of those networks is available as part of Paramount Plus. You'll be able to just stream those favorite shows without needing to turn over to MTV2 or BET Her or whoever it may be. <coughs> Keep a close eye on this. I suspect that they are gonna reach a deal, all signs so that this is kind of hammering out some details, there's still some hangups there over which channels to be dropped and exact terms of some of the disclosures there. That's all we know and all I can speculate on that right now. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. It's a huge help. I'll talk to you all again tomorrow real soon.